because it's a simple little example. Last time I went back east, I hadn't been there in a while, and my hair had grown, so people were coming up to me going, you're growing your hair, you know? And I listened to it, I said, no, I'm actually not growing my hair, I'm just not cutting my hair, yeah? In fact, I had nothing to do with my hair growing, yeah? But it was sort of made that feeling of, oh yeah, I go home a couple hours a week and grow my hair, you know? And I, get, I have a growing hair group, and we get together, and we try to gauge how each other's doing, and then we're raving us, you're a really good hair grower, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and yet the, the language that's being used all day is constantly inferring we have something to do with something we have nothing to do with. A lot. Not just that simple example. A lot of the time. What's being assumed is a sense of being the doer where we have nothing to do with. Yeah? And we're listening to it. We're listening to it in like an habitual way. You don't see it's having an effect. It's like a trance it. We, we participate in each other's trance all freaking day. Yeah. How, how is reality going to be clear to us if the reality keeps playing around with distortion and confusion? Yeah. You are the reality. And you can seem not to be that. And when you're seeming not to be that, Reality is if it doesn't exist. You don't fucking feel it. You don't sense it. You're not bumping into it during the day. Yeah? Like I used to hear when I was a kid, we had you know, Catholic school. They taught us about the three qualities of God, which was it's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. It's all-powerful, all-knowing, and it's everywhere. And I always used to be mad. Why am I not bumping into it? If it's everywhere. I never fucking run into God. What's happening? If it's all this, where, what's going on? Can I be that powerful that I can black out everywhere? And what's all powerful and all omniscient? Well, if I am omniscient, all powerful and everywhere, I can make it seem like I'm not. Yes. That's true. I can. The only, that, I'm the only thing, non-thing, that can do that. Nothing else can make themselves seem real except reality. Nothing. Nothing can... You can't come up with a sense of reality out of falsehood. It's only if reality sees it a different way that it can appear to be real. Where's your role? What's, what, where's your role in that? Take it from, go back a little farther from the subjective experience. Everyone in this room is having a different experience of this event. You don't get it? You're giving it the meaning it has right now. And the person, the seeming person next to you may be giving a totally different meaning. This is playing God all day. Yeah. What could be playing God but God? <laughs> We're busily trying to find God. That's what's looking. Or we want to call it God. We're trying to find it as an object or a thought or an idea when we're the one that's hatching those thoughts, ideas, and those objects. We're that God. Yeah. And like a master said, what's conceiving can't be conceived of. What's hearing can't be heard. What's feeling can't be felt. Yeah. You and I are the reality. And we're giving reality or lending reality to what we're seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and touching. Yeah. And thinking, especially. We're giving it such a reality that you can think about last Wednesday, which isn't happening, and produce an effect now. You can produce anxiety about something that's not happening. That's how powerful the mind is. Yeah. It can go to an imaginary field and harvest a crop. That's it, what it's doing, is it? And especially in the future, it doesn't even have the, the claim that it actually happened. We have at least a sense something happened, but we're doing it in the, in the field of the future that hasn't happened, and yet we're still producing or harvesting effects in us right now. You can be reacting to a future and not be responding to this moment. It will supplant this moment with a mythical moment. Who or what could possibly do that? Or do you believe something's doing it to you? That you have nothing to do with this place? You just got dropped in here, trying to make do the best you can? 
That there's this all-powerful fucking motherfucker being that's screwing with you all day? And I have to pray religiously to hope that it eases off, maybe? <laughs> or you may be what's behind the camera, taking yourself to be what's in front of the camera, this action figure. You may be living this life, giving it as much reality as it can, and the movie seems pretty damn good because of the director, yeah, and the audience of the movie. See where the real power lies. You know? if, you, if you can look, you'll find it's coming from a location right near you. <laughs> where is it happening from? Where is that motherfucker dropping? Whoa, it seems to be happening right here. <laughs> I find it revelatory. Yeah. I find it's a quantum leap from what the first inventory of recovery did help me with, which is take the spotlight off of you and look at where my, my role in everything was. Well, this is taking a you spotlight off of all of this and take bringing it back to your role in things. Yeah? Very humbling. Very, a huge relief from blame and all like this, and they're doing it to me. And <laughs> juicy abstractions we can go into. It's not so. Yeah. And if I stop watering and, and bringing artificial light to that pet, harvest crop, that area of yesterday and the future, guess what happens? This day shines brightly. Yeah. The brighter it is, the clearer the invitation read it from afar. You can see it. You don't have to be real up close. You'll see it from afar. You actually see it clearer with a more open lens, not a con concentrated, contracted lens, but more open lens. You get the message. You know? And you're there to receive it. And it may sound weird, but if this possibility of giving meaning to things is given to all that there is of meaning, see what that's going to bring about. Yeah? You can get into this imaginary duet. Yeah? You're going to open up reality to be real here by entertaining the possibility. Yeah? Something that had no effect or influence on you now has a, is the biggest influence of all. What happened? Did it just show up? Or was it always there waiting for your acknowledgement? Yeah? How's the acknowledgement withheld? when you're up the ass of self, basically. When you're identified as something that you're not. How can, how can you recognize what you are through the lens of something that you're not? You just turn the lens on that and realize you're not that, and then you see what you are. You're the seen. It's not in form. It's not a thing. It's non-thing, and it's unformed. Our logic of our conditional mind is always to, to imagine a noun with any verb. This is giving up that fucking hallucination and seeing all there is is verb. In. And the things become really freaking obvious. It's much difficult. It's different to recognize something if it's moving and you're still. When you're moving with it, then you really get it. Yeah. But if you want to be a stationary point, and then you think you see the river by just having a little segment that it passed you by, and you call that the river, you never get the expanse of the event. But if you're moving with it, like you're a part of the current of it all, and you recognize it. You know? It's not like a mystical secret you finally, it's like they say, it's an open secret. It's the gateless gate. What could, what could be a secret if everyone knew it? Obviously it isn't. It's an open secret. What, what toll would you have to pay if it's a gateless gate to enter it? Obviously none. Yeah. It's the journey that doesn't provoke one step. All these statements they use to try to imply <laughs> what's looking is what you're looking for. And then you hear it, where, where? No, write that. <laughs> You know, you, because this has a preconceived idea stuck on it. That you think it's who's looking. 
which totally blinds you to the what's looking, while the what's looking is occurring. It's a mind-boggling, really. It doesn't even alter the what's looking, because it can't. Hmm. It just puts a little, like a, a skin on it, who's looking, and it does the trick. I can now live oblivious to all there is. <laughs> I can live in this omnipresence and never feel what the omnipresence is. Yeah. <laughs> I can be in the omnipotence yet feel totally powerless. <laughs> I can be searching for love when I'm in the source of love. <laughs> I can be trying to achieve myself into what can only be expressed. <laughs> so, it will seem like it isn't so, until it gets exhausted in its little shenanigans, and then it'll, just, it'll exhale one day, and everything will change. Just give up the ghost, yeah? Like the, the Course of Miracles says, you know, I need do nothing. Everything that's worth its salt will lead you to that moment, that I need do nothing. That's the revelation, yeah? That all has been just as it's been. All this is going to be forgotten. It's only, it's like writing on cloud. It's not making a lasting impression. Everything is just, it's like skimming over the sur surface of mind. Probably not even being noticed much. While, you know, you can try to hold on to something that's coming and going. Why not just let go? It's sort of like the idea, <coughs> you're thinking you're grasping, let's say, your mind is like a grasping tool. And let's say you start going down a big tube and there's nothing to grasp. After a while, it may dawn you their wings, you know? You know what I mean? You'll, you'll try to use the wings to grasp, and then finally you can't do it, and then it, it gets exhausted, and then it stops, and then the wings appear. They've always been there. They were just fucking arthritically formed by a failed system of thought and interpretation. These are to grab and to get and to hold when maybe they have a fly, you know? That's what happens. Hopefully these these talks can speed it up, save you some time. You know? Because when it dawns on you, you lose interest in time. It's like you've never been waiting long. There's no value and patience. There's nothing you were missing. You know, 
it's as if time loses all relevance in that way when this dawns on you because you realize all there is is timelessness, yeah? How can you long for what's never gone? How can you have to weather a long process that what cannot be processed, yeah? This is not a product of your endeavors. mental process, it can't get rid of the seed. No way. So what does it do? It makes it seem to disappear by adopting it into a form of looking, called self-centeredness, yes? So now, this looking doesn't emphasize the seeing, it emphasizes the seer and the seed, yeah? And in a way, by that emphasis, it, le it loses the, the lifeblood of the event. Conscious contact isn't observed, isn't even sensed, and an interpretation of who is in contact and with what becomes the the dominant story. Yeah, it's an amazing heist in a way. So there's the oneness of an event, which is there's the seer, the seeing, the scene, but it gets partitioned. The seers emphasize, the scenes emphasize, but the seeing is diminished. Without the seeing, there's no seer or scene. But we like to think it is, that's not the case. Yeah? We think the seeing is an arbitrary event that will happen to the permanent seer. It may be seeing, it may not, but it's always a seer. It's not the case. The seer and the seen are produced by the seeing. Yeah? It's not the other way around. The seer isn't producing the seeing. The seeing produces the possibility of a story called the seer. The seeing. Yeah? So there it is. That heist occurs. And then it just geometrically progresses, because it's given a lot of time here, and it has tons of space, and it's manifesting. And it's manifesting through, through your and my breath, in a sense. Our breath of reality blows into that activity and gives it a sense of being real. And now, we take ourselves to be one of those little blow-up dolls, and everything else that we're blowing up with meaning has the ability to bite us in the ass. And now we're living under our own trials and tribulations. Yeah? We become like the target for the arrow. Yeah? And we make up a story of the archer. Yeah? Sometimes we're it, sometimes it's someone else. It's progressed geometrically, but no matter how much it progressed, it can, it's still defined by its limitation, which it can only reach the level of seemingly so. It can only seem to be so to you. Yeah? It can seem to be so to you, and yet right next to you, it's not seeming to be so to that person. But what is real, so real to you, may not be real at all to the next person. Yeah? Yeah? So the, what's giving the meaning, which we've gone over and over again, to that thing to be seemingly so is what's so. Yeah? Now, let's say in this event of what's so, that what's so ain't going with it. <laughs> yeah, it's not into making that thing seem real. So that thing has no reality other than the reality is given, so it's having no effect on Denise, let's say. Yeah? The other person, it's triggered a hook. It, there's a belief there that it's about me. And in that, then the reality lends itself to that. And then the dance is on. Yeah? And a lot of times, you don't want to be with the partner you're dancing with. So there's tension and conflict, and then there's what-ifs, and it could be different, and this and that. And there's a total denial about what's going on. And it seems as real as real can be. And of course, if you have enough of that, you're going to be driven to get some relief. Yeah? But the relief, the suggestions about the relief will be coming from the animated problem. Yeah? So all your solutions actually reinforce the problem. They're the bigger problem, actually. <laughs> they're act 
they're actually the way to apply more reality to the problem by trying to get out of it. So now you're in this conundrum, and it's building a lot of mass and a lot of momentum, and you pretty much have forgotten everything, and you're really, really hyper aware of all these somethings. Yeah? So the forest has been forgotten, and now you're in the world of trees. Yes? Individual trees with a lot of power. The power of big forests. Right? <laughs> and you want to get out. Let's say it gets so bad, you'll do almost anything to get out. And you have a tendency to go anywhere, and so you start shooting drugs and prostituting yourself and living this way and that way. And you never imagined anything like this could have ever happened to you, yet it's happening to you every day. Yeah. And it can get to a point where it seems so real that it doesn't seem any way out. Yeah. Now that's the place we never want to go, yet that's an incredible changing point. Where we hit the point where there's no way out, that's when we find out we may not be in. Yeah? You can't escape, so the bottom occurs, and the bottom reveals a new beginning. Because you weren't actually in what you thought you were in, and now you proceed to live the possibility of being out of it, like recovery and stuff. Yeah? This is what happens. It's happening every second, every day, every, day, every hour. Yeah? It's just re you're being reinvented, reinforced, <coughs> right? Fed a lot of interest and attention. You die. Again and again and again and again and again. It's like blowing a, a, a blow-up doll that has a couple of holes in it. You're constantly <laughs> blowing it to get the semblance of the image that you're hoping to get. Yeah? But it always <laughs> sags it. <laughs> it's freaking exhausting, to tell you the truth. I would imagine. Yeah? What happens is, if you're seeing, you see it, someone informs you of it, and it resonates in you. So now, in a certain way, let's say a downscale way, you've seen it. Yeah. You haven't had the hit yet, but you're seeing it. Yeah? It's like an aha or an unspoken yes. That's pretty close to the seeing of it. Now, okay, we play on that seeing of it. Yeah? You get it repeated. You listen to someone talks or whatever. You go to see other people. And then once something's going to happen where the seeing will be emphasized. Yeah? The understanding is forgotten. You don't need the understanding with the seeing. You don't need a view when vision is available. Yeah? The view helps as a, certain, uh, as a substitute until the vision gets clear. That's the view. That's its value. But once the vision becomes clear, it will become a disservice to keep clinging to the view. You're free from the view. You've got the vision. Yeah? So the vision's happening. Yeah, that's what's on offer. So if you have an affinity to this message, you feel like something's there, entertain it. Entertain the possibility. See what downloads in you. And you'll know the tree by its fruits. If it starts to work, why not let it keep working? Yeah? Instead of running to the next right thing or the next big thing, why not hunker down and just let entertaining it? Yeah? Take away maybe some of the frills of all those, you know, spiritual nobility trips, going to the meeting, sitting close to the thing. Maybe that maybe you don't have to do that for a while. Maybe just entertain it, see how it downloads in your own predicament. Yes. And if it's working, allow it to keep working. There's no thought or effort on your part. It's not vigilance. It's entertaining. And your mind's entertaining anyway all day. You're just changing what it's entertaining. That's all. Simple. In other words, you, you said no to the beef, and you're taking the, like the tofu burger. You know? <laughs> just saying no to the beef once, and you're taking the tofu burger. How much effort is there? Absolutely none. Yeah? You're going to eat no matter what. Just replace it with something. Now your mind's entertaining a possibility. That possibility isn't from an imaginary field. It isn't from a dry, avid, arid uh, garden. It's from a very lush space. And it's going to inform you of that while you're entertaining it. Yeah? If you get fruit from that garden, it's going to be fucking juicy. It's not going to be you get like a paper saying... The story of the apple you're never going to bite. So you get this, oh, I, I had an apple. I read about it. I looked at the picture of it. But you never really had the apple. You didn't eat it. Yeah? Now you start eating it, so you don't need a description of the apple. You, know? you don't need memories of the apple. You don't need pictures of apples. You've actually tasted it. And then 
you, you may have a liking for that taste. Keep eating. If this is infinite, find out. I haven't been this, I haven't been, my, my ability to entertain has, has been matched. This is always there to be entertained. Yeah? If my, if, I, if my ability to entertain has been lent to it, it will, be, it will be kept busy by what's always able to be entertained. Yeah? And, you can, and then you have plenty of attention and interest to entertain what shows up today. You, are not, you do not have enough interest to deal with tomorrow and yesterday. They're not happening. But you'll have enough interest to deal with today. I mean, how many thoughts do I need today to come to this talk? About maybe a five, and then maybe figure out where to go to eat. <laughs> I'm having 70,000 thoughts a day. Basically, I need 10 days to navigate this Saturday in Toronto. What are the 69,990 else thoughts doing? They're there to reinforce the, the idea that you're the thinker, that you're the doer, that you're the feeler, that you're the Alpha and the Omega. It could not be any other way. What's not so has to be remembered to appear to be so. It has to be produced. What's not so for it to appear to be so has to be produced. It cannot generate itself. Yeah? It cannot animate itself. It's, it's bereft of life. It's bereft of light. It has to take the light yeah? and hijack it and then use it to, to reflect, to cast the light on the past and the future and get this really weird reflection of you that assumes, all right, I, I was that, I'm going to be that, I am that. Yeah? And then that's that. And then the rest is story. I've seen it. May, you may have a different opinion. This is what I've seen. This is what's happened. I can't describe it any better. Maybe tomorrow there'll be more description. But, I, you know, it's just... how You don't... To, to judge the beast, you don't, may not have to see it from nose to tail. You can get a pretty good gut idea of it just from the fucking head. Yeah. You can hear about the rest, and I will just reassure you that you're on the right freaking path, the non-path. <laughs> it's only the head that bites you. Everything else is superfluous. You know that's the thing you want to see. The thing with the teeth that grabs, gets you. Oh, you're a loser. Hook. You know, uh, I'm not. I'm not worthy of hook. Yes. So as long as your belief. <coughs> assumes what's being offered to be so, that bait now catches the fish. You, your mind becomes an object, seemingly, and now when you, that happens, you feel like a historical fish. You have a feeling that you were there before this occurred, which you weren't, and that you'll be there after this occurred, which you won't. But there's a strong feeling you will be. That's the production of the sense of self. What happens if you don't take the bait? The production can't go online. It can't. It can't produce the goods. Because it's been cut. At the, it's been cut at the energy point. Yeah? You don't try to put your hand in the conveyor belt. You turn off the electricity. Yeah? To put your hand in the conveyor belt, your hand may get mangled. But to turn off the electricity, the machine stops. Yeah? You are the electricity. Stop paying the fucking bills. 